Today is September 11th, 2020. Right now, it is myself and my dad, and we're gonna backcountry into my wallow. Pretty much this weekend, we're just gonna be hunting the area revolving the wallow. Back in March or April, I came up here and I set up a trail cam and I left it all over summer. And so I haven't checked it since, so that should give me some intel as long as it works. But right now we got to beat the sun and we're going to try to launch our way to our camping spot and then set up our tent and then see if we can locate some elk. So it's 8.45, we just set up camp and just made a quick quick dinner for me and just been chilling around. So I've just been waiting for everything to settle down. Just let everything be quiet for a little bit. Right now I'm just gonna let out a bugle or two just to see if we can locate a bowl. Pretty much where we're camped at, it's a little point. So if I stand on this point, I can hear basically 270 degrees and there's like one mountain sign in front of me. There's two over here. And, there, and then there's also the backside on the ridge that I'm standing on, so. So it's almost 12.30 p.m. This is the wallow where I set up my trail cam. This is also the same wallow where I missed that big six point three years ago. We came in here, nothing. Located, nothing. Sat here, nothing. The thing that's been messing with my head is the fact that I can't get my phone to read my SD card that my trail cam was taking pictures on. And so right now it's like, I have no intel on the activity of this wallow. The trail cam says that it's taken 1,200 photos. It's just a pretty uneventful day today. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully we get lucky here.
I have sat here for 11 and a half hours today. I only have about 30 minutes left of daylight and I don't think anything's gonna show up so I'm not entirely sure what this animal did or where it went. I last heard it down below me down here but I don't know. I'm just gonna pack up and slowly sneak my way back up and meet my dad on top of this ridge and then we'll discuss what we want to do back at camp. It is 9.40 a.m. September 13th. We're just gonna slowly hunt our way back to camp, pack up and then get back to the truck and go home because uh, my dad has to work. It's like 60 degrees right now. And so I think it's a little too cold for elk to be wallowing. And so I figured let's just pack up and let's just hike around and locate and try to see if we can sound off a bull in the distance. So that's what we've been doing. But if nothing happens, just gonna head back to camp and then pack up and go home for this trip. Today and yesterday, to be honest, they just weren't ideal wallow conditions. The forecast said that it was gonna be like 90 degrees. And technically it's not wrong, but I think with all this smoke, it's just blocked so much sunlight out that the temperature is just a lot cooler than what the weather forecast predicted. Yesterday and today, the high is only like 60 degrees, which just from past experiences, the elk, they don't really care about wallows. Uh, we just decided to ditch the wallow. We sat there for like an hour or two hours and then we just decided to hike around that area and just kind of bugle, try to locate some elk, but came up short. Today I'm hunting with my cousin Joe and we're both shooters, well we both have tags but today we're just going to be hiking around just kind of locate and see if we can call in a bull. Weather has been too cold for a wallow so switch of tactics, day three, there are times of trying. So far, nothing, no bugles. Uh, we crossed a couple set of decently fresh elk tracks. Uh, one track took this little trail down there where Joe is. And then they were walking on this main road, but no response, nothing. And there's a bunch of like these little gnats that just annoy the crap out of you. So right now we're just gonna continue to walk this road and just throw out bugles because like down below like we we're basically on the top so we can locate high and listen down below so hopefully we get lucky and strike up a bull here soon
so we set up on that bowl and we call them in or Joe called them in to 40 yards from me this little tree right here he stood there he was coring to me it was like blocking me from the elk so all I saw was his right ear and part of his right antler and he was just standing there I don't know if he caught me like moving when I was ranging or what I think happened was I think that it is so open here that by the time he got here it's like realistically he should have saw another elk so he like held up because he didn't see another elk and then after a while he just turned around and instead of walking in front of this brush right here he walked behind it but there was one little clearing right here where he walked by and I had one little opening but I cow called and he took like two additional steps and then he stopped and then I saw only his hind quarter and I think he bugled and then I wasn't gonna shoot his hind quarter and then he just slowly took off and he went in we last heard him bugling on this other ridge right here because there's a little dip right here and he's over there so Joe and I were gonna switch roles um, I think he knows Joe's bugle so I'm gonna be caller and then Joe's gonna be shooter so hopefully by changing up our call we just pull this boat in again You got pretty close. We'll draw at 30 yards. Oh, I know. No shot. No shot. Because you see that big bunch of trees right there? Uh huh. So I was, you know, you see that right in between these two V trees? Mm -hmm. You see that little white tree right there? Yep. In between it? Yeah. I was standing right there so that if he came this way, I got a shot. And if that came, he yeah. came that way, I got a shot. And he came this way. He got but, right here, right? Yeah, he was right there. The yeah. sheet. But, but uh, there's this freaking branch that comes in and then it was like it's got the leaves still yeah. so his whole body was covered up i didn't have a shot Damn. and he so just stopped there huh yeah he just stopped there and he looked and then he's like and that, that's when he was bugling really close yeah and then he, he, he was probably there for like no more than a minute and he just turned back around and then when he went back he never had a shot huh? no shot when he went back 
No, because I didn't have visual because of that tree. Oh. So I, I would only have a shot. I purposely set up there because I knew that he was going to come and look. So if you so that's why I was right there. I was like, there's no way he's going to make it all the way over here yeah. again. So that's why I like worked all the way over here. If he took like two more steps, yeah. I would have had a shot. Because yeah. there, yeah, there, there was like a lane about that big and I had to shoot. I would have to, um, I, w I didn't have to crouch actually because I'm shooting downhill. So he, yeah, his, his whole side would have popped out, but it was only his, his, his side was blocked. Everything was blocked except his head and his antlers. So pretty, they were dark horned and yeah, white at the that, tips. That's why I saw it earlier. All right, so we just sat down and ate lunch. And that's a dead buck. The bases are like, I don't know, pretty thick. It's a, I think the mice and pretty much all the rodents like chewed off the antlers, but that looks to be a pretty nice buck. Seven o'clock p.m. Been hunting for 14 hours today. Ever since that epic bull encounter this morning, it's been pretty dead. Closing in on daylight, so we're gonna work our way back to the car. We still have like 30 miles to go. So, it should get dark here in maybe 20, 30 minutes. So, we're just gonna kinda slowly locate our way back and see if we can locate our bull.
has been so smoky these past couple of days and yesterday night we got some rainfall and it's like been drizzling off and on we can finally see clouds again it's just been smoke the past couple of days That bull dropped down from the other mountain, dropped down to the creek, crested to our side, and he was hanging out right around here. And I think he was just waiting for us to close our part of the distance. And then after a while, he just turned around and started hiking up the other ridge again. We know he has cows, so like he's got really nothing to lose if he doesn't want to fight.